us just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know him as your Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust my Jesus, Jesus. Beautiful. Will the children please come forward? Adults are welcome too, of course. Anybody who would like to come forward, if you're tired of sitting on the pew, you can sit on the floor if you want. Come on up. Glad you're here. Look at this. We're back. We're back. Hi. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so glad we're back. This is so great that we're back. I hope you had a great summer. Uh, did, did you go anywhere? Did you, go, did you just stick around home or did you go anywhere cool? Anywhere fun? How many of you went to the beach? Let's we'll start there. You go to the beach? Oh, okay. Because it was a hot summer. There was a lot of heat going on this summer. Hey, come on up. How many of you went to a lake? Beach and a lake? Sort of, kind of, mine, maybe, sort of. Did anybody go to a big city? Small town? I went to Boston. You went to Boston? No way. That's awesome. With your dad? Cool. Well, that's great. That's, that's the other thing is there's some really neat stuff just close by, too. Just You don't have to travel all over the world. You can, there's some really cool stuff right nearby, even right around Melrose to do. You don't have to go far away. But here's the thing. If you went... No matter where you went, if you went to the beach or to the big city or small town or wherever, I'm betting that if you looked around, you would have seen a church or churches around. It doesn't matter where you travel in this country or where you travel in the world, you're going you're to see churches around. Now, why is that? Why are there churches everywhere you go? Any idea? They're great. You're right, they're great. <laughs> Bottom line, that's it, we're done here. Yeah, they're great. You're right. Well, one of the main reasons that you see churches everywhere you go, and there's all different kinds of churches, but anywhere you go, you'll find churches of one kind or another, is because we all need to be reminded that God is in our lives and in our world and that God loves us. God loves you. God loves you. We need that reminder. So when you come into a, a, a room like this, this room is called, anybody know what this room is called? A room. A room. That's called uh, something else. Starts with an S. San sanctuary. Sanctuary. There you go. This room is called a sanctuary. 
It's called a sacred space. It's, it's different than, a sanctuary is different than any other kind of room. In fact, think of it this way. If you, if you walk into Shaw's, right? The door's open, you get hit with this uh, air conditioning, and there's all the food, right? You kind of know why you're there. You know what's going on. You're there to buy some food for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or whatever. So it's got a certain feel to it there. You're right, you go in, that's what you're there to do. Um, if you walk into a school, it's kind of the same way. You've got your hallways and classrooms and cubbies and teachers and all that, right? It's, you know why you're there. You've got a certain energy there. There's a certain feel to that space. Um, if you go into a dentist's office, let's say, right? That's, got a, that's probably the best example, right? It's got a different feel to it, right? It's, it smells a little weird. Well, that's disinfectant. It smells clean. Um, and you might be a little nervous going in there, but uh, you're there to, to, to make sure your teeth are okay. And, and everybody's there going to be very friendly and all, right? So every space, every room has a different feel to it. Yes, sir. So, so I have walkers when I'm in first grade. I have walkers. That is awesome. You got lockers in first grade. See, I'm telling you what, when I was in school, we didn't get lockers until middle school. That was like the soonest we ever got lockers. Or maybe it was even high school. But yeah, that's, that's great. That's great that you have a locker. One more and then I got to finish this thought. You got a locker in kindergarten? Oh man, that's so cool. That's great. Where was I? <laughs> something, about, something about sanctuaries and stuff. Um, right, so, yay. So anyway, you come into this space. Okay, different than a dentist's office. Here we go. Uh, so every room has a different feel. When you come into this room, this sanctuary, it feels different than any other space you will be in. Uh, it, it, the sound sa carries differently in here. The sounds, it's, things sound different in here. Uh, the light is different when it's especially sunny. The sun coming in through the stained glass windows. The light is different. It's a big space. It's a big open space. It just feels different. And it feels different because we come in here for a certain reason. We come in here to remember what I said earlier, that God is in our lives, that God is in our world, and that God loves us. And from there, we can do all sorts of great stuff in the world, uh, if we remember that. So that's why you see churches all over the world. Wherever you travel, you'll find a church. And I hope that as you get older, you'll wander into some of those. You'll go into some of those churches. They're, they're all different kinds. Um, but to find your, your place, the place that, that feeds your heart, that makes you feel good, uh, and, remember, and helps you remember God's presence uh, in your life. But that's why I'm so excited that you're here today, because there's no better place to be than right here uh, for Welcome Back Sunday, to remember God's love for us all. All right? Thanks for coming up. Uh, you can go sit back with your families. Justice, justice and joy. 
I can't tell you how excited I am to be back uh, and have all of us back, to have Welcome Back Sunday. It's always such a thrilling day because we get to start our new program year. There's so many things in the wind, so many things in the works. Um, I do want to thank Ed and the team that was working through the summer to plan the Victorian Fair activities that are on, do on, the, uh, on deck uh, for today. I'm going to be starting, as he said, at noon. If you can, stick around a little while or come back after a little while and uh, be here to, to help out, that would be outstanding to have you part of that. The other folks I want to thank, as a lot of people were active over the summer, Tom, who's up there uh, in the uh, choir area there, uh, installed a new sound system uh, in our church over the summer. Huge project. Uh, that he did on his own so thank you tom for that just a huge uh, uh, addition to our our church and our liturgy here uh, you may hear the the testing of the sound that was going on before the service but uh, our first run through this morning and by all accounts everybody can hear everybody so we're good i think it sounds great thanks tom for that um also um I wanted to thank uh, Jeff and Gary, who've been working on the grounds here at the church, uh, which over the summer, you know, drought or not, boy, stuff grew like mad out there. And it, we, I, I got back and it's like a jungle out there. So they've been putting in some serious time uh, clearing the grounds. Um, and uh, if you'd like to help out with that, there's, uh, whoa, there's stuff yet to do. So um, Gary would love to avoid uh, calling in a landscaper for that. But if we, if we do, we do. Uh, but um, if you'd like to help volunteer with that, Gary is right back there. Guy with the sunglasses on, ready to work or whatever. Um, so you can uh, touch base with him. He'd love to hear from you, I'm sure. Um, Sunday school. Registration is underway right now. Uh, there's QR codes to do that. We've got QR codes for everything, by the way. The bulletin itself has a QR code. If you're new to our church, you can access the, uh, the uh, bulletin that way if you'd like. Um, and if you have, by the way, if you've ac accessed the bulletin through a QR code and, and you have it on a device of any kind, when we hit these scripture lessons, you can tap that and boom, the scripture lesson will come, come right up for you. You can read along that way. But there is a QR code for uh, uh, the Sunday school registration. That is up and out uh, in uh, the narthex. There's uh, paper registrations if you would prefer that. Uh, but the easiest way is to do it online. Uh, and we really hope that you'll register your kids, particularly because we have quite a few here today. That would be wonderful if you could do that. Even if you're, you're not planning to be here every Sunday for Sunday school, we just want to track uh, who's where and what grades and all that sort of thing. Uh, so that would be great if you could do that. Our um, new and solo deacon of Christian education, Ashley Tinkin, will be here next Sunday to fill you in on the plan uh, for Sunday school for this year. I will tell you, though, that she is in need of help. <laughs> uh, teachers, volunteers of any kind. Uh, so certainly speak with her or today with me. Uh, and we'd love to, uh, to get a good cadre of people working on that uh, uh, going forward. Um, deacons, speaking of deacons, are meeting this Tuesday, e uh, sorry, Wednesday evening, this Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, that'll be right out there in the narthex. Uh, you will, should have already gotten an email about that. Those meetings are always open, by the way, to anybody who'd like to come. Um, next Sunday, you're invited back, of course, as we continue our uh, welcome back month here uh, in September. By the way, one of the things that I've been asked about is hugs because uh, I, everybody likes hugs. And you know I'm not wearing a mask. I was wearing a mask much more last uh, uh, program year. Uh, so I'm seeing how that goes. Uh, but I'm uh, still, I if I start hugging, I'm going to be hugging a lot of people. So um, I'm going to hold off on that for just for now. You can hug each other. I don't care. But I'm just talking about <laughs> myself here. Uh, so just so you know, that's where that, I'm not trying to be standoffish or anything, but I just, uh, you know, that's where I'm at with that. Just so everybody knows. Um, if you are new to our church, by the way, we're really glad that you're here. And I hope that you'll take a moment, there's a guest book uh, in the Narthex to sign that, if you would. Um, and that way you can know a little bit more about us through the newsletter, which you can get uh, uh, through your email, uh, and find out more about who we are here at First Congregational Church. And, uh, and who knows, maybe this might be your church home uh, as you find your, your connection with us here. Uh, 
one of the things that we're continuing this program year is taking our offering in a contactless way. So the offering plates are at the exits to the san uh, from the sanctuary. Uh, so we hope you'll take advantage of those on your way out this morning. Um, and as we sing the doxology now, I hope you'll contemplate your giving to our church, um, which is a real way, again, not unlike communion, of making your faith tangible uh, in this world. Your offering is invited. And I invite you to hear these words uh, from the Apostle Paul, who wrote many letters, of course, and this is from his letter to uh, the Romans, 12th chapter, beginning of the 12th chapter. Do not be conformed to this age. Now, that's a great line. <laughs> Probably one of the best lines in all of Scripture, really. If you think about all that's going on in the world, think about that line. Think about this, this little nugget of, of scripture. Do not be conformed to this age. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. Here ends our scripture lessons this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, as I said with the children's sermon, and I'm going to pick up on that, that, that theme here, I'm so thrilled that you're here, and I'll tell you why. As I said, there's a, we've heard this morning from a number of places, there's a lot going on uh, today. There's a lot of activities about to start a block and a half away down on Main Street, but not just there, right here at our own church in connection with the uh, Victorian Fair. And I think it's absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect, that we begin today and begin our new program year today, right here, right here in our sanctuary with worship. This summer I finished up my sabbatical time, which has been focused on sanctuary spaces, sacred spaces, and I am more convinced than ever that we desperately need such spaces in our lives and in our communities. In fact, I would say that having sacred spaces at the core, at the core of our lives and our communities is the only way, the only way we are going to find our way forward in this world. Of course, I'm totally biased here in saying that this sacred space, this sanctuary is the best there is. It just is. I mean, I've seen a lot of them over the course of this sabbatical time, and you are sitting in the very best one. That's just the way it is. So congratulations to you for being here. I mean, think about it. Here we are, this sanctuary is in the center of our circular building, meaning it is at the center of who we are at First Congregational Church. With all that is going on outside the walls of this place, especially on a busy day like today, this is where we gather. This is where we begin. Because worship is at the center of who we are. Encounter with God is at the center of who we are. Our society races on faster and faster with more divisiveness than ever, more uncertainty than ever, and we ask ourselves, how do we slow things down? How do we become more thoughtful? How do we make repairs? How do we live differently? How can we come 
together. And I think the reason we're even asking those questions and feeling those things is because we've lost sight of one thing. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. When you hear that word, sanctuary, what do you think? Now you might think of a place of, of safety, right? a place where you can find sanctuary. In fact, there are some of our churches which, who are uh, sanctuary churches, meaning that these are churches that provide safety to uh, undocumented brothers and sisters in our country. Sanctuary is a safe place. Sanctuary is also a quiet place. When you hear that word sanctuary, you probably think of a place where you can come and pray. A place to be in silence, a place to think, a place to reflect. Sanctuary is a safe place, it's a quiet place. Sanctuary is always a pla- also a place of welcome. This is a place where you are welcome right here No matter your religious background, this is a place where you're welcome no matter who you love, no matter where you come from, no matter where you're going. This is a place where it isn't just uh, that you're not judged, it's that you're celebrated. A place where you are affirmed and validated and empowered. Why? Because sanctuary is a place where we welcome the foreigner, the stranger, the lost, those who have no home. And you know what? That's all of us. At one time or another, that's all of us. We all face those things. We're all foreigners, sojourning through this life as best we can. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are spiritually not at home here. How often do you feel like a stranger? How often do you feel alone? How often do you feel like you've lost your way? We need sanctuary. All of us do. We need this church. We need this place, this house of God, this reminder of the divine. We need it so that we can remember that we are not alone. In all of it, we're not alone. We need it so that we can remember that we're part of something bigger and brighter and better than the enormous challenges that we face. We need this sanctuary to remember that we belong somewhere. We belong right here. And that we're going to be okay. We need this place of grounding and recentering so that we can go out beyond those doors and embrace our lives with renewed assurance and direction. So, as we begin this new program year here today, remember this. The things that this sanctuary provides are the very things that are missing from our world right now. Safety, silence, welcome, encounter, renewal. Consequently, there is no better place for you to be this morning than right here. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this sanctuary, this place of assurance, this place of challenge, this place of encounter with you, this home where we belong. As we regather and enter this new program year, strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that we might renew our faith and find our hope restored. As we find communion with you and with one another, we give you thanks for your accompaniment with us upon our path. For we live and move and have our being in you, through the Spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.